Welcome back to Fairy Tale Nails. Today's story and nail design is Puss in Boots. This was so hard to figure out what kind of nail design to go along with this story. Because everyone thinks about Shrek and the Puss in Boots in Shrek and how he's like a little Spanish cat and he's so cute. But um, the original story is actually French. So I had the hardest time trying to figure out what to do. Some people thought maybe we could actually do fur nails. And the cat in the book is actually a gray striped cat. And he's so cute. But I wasn't really sure what to do. So this is what we came up with, with me and my clients and everybody that I talked to. Hope you enjoy the story and the nail design. And without any further talking, let's get to it. Thanks, guys. There was once a poor miller whose only possessions were his mill, a donkey, and a cat. When he died, his three sons shared them out as followed. The eldest son took the mill, the middle son, the donkey, and the youngest son, the cat. The youngest boy was quite dejected at the way their father's property had been divided, and felt that he had received a very poor share. My brothers can go into partnership and use the donkey to help work the mill, but what use is a cat? he said to himself. I could make it into a pie and sell its skin for a muff, but I, I don't want to kill the cat. The cat happened to have overheard his words and spoke up at once. Don't be sad, my good master, he said. Just give me a sack and, and have a pair of boots made up for me, and you will soon see that you have a better bargain than either of your brothers. The boy was so surprised to hear the cat talk that he was quite ready to believe him. So he went to the best shoemaker in the village and ordered a pair of boots in the softest leather. The cat was so pleased with them that he wore them all the time, which is how he got his name, Puss in Boots. Then the boy gave him the sack that he had asked for and Puss in Boots slung it over his shoulder and made for the woods to hunt for rabbits. He put some bran and some lettuce into the sack and stretched himself out beside it, pretending to be dead. He had barely closed his eyes when things began to happen exactly as he had planned. A plump young rabbit hopped out of the bushes, sniffed all around the sack, and then crawled inside it. In a flash, the cat drew the string tightly around the top, caught the rabbit, and killed it, feeling very pleased that his trick had succeeded so quickly. Puss slung the sack over his shoulder again and set out for the king's palace. Once there, he demanded to see the king without delay, and the flunkies escorted him to the throne room. Sire, he said, bowing low to the king, I have brought you a young rabbit which my noble lord, the Marquis of Carabas, for that was the title that he had just invented for the miller's son, has commanded me to present to your majesty. Thank your master, the king said graciously, and tell him I am very pleased with his present. Another time, the cat hid himself in the wheat fields and held his sacks wide open when a couple of partridges fluttered into it. He pulled the strings tight and caught them fast. These two he presented to the king, who rewarded the puss suitably. One day, he overheard the courtiers saying that the king was planning to go for a drive along the river with his daughter, who was the most beautiful princess in the world. The cat ran back to his master and said, If you do as I say, your fortune is made. All you have to do is go bathing in the river at the exact time and in the exact spot that I tell you. Leave the rest to me. The young man was very puzzled at this, but he decided to follow the cat's instructions because it was a hot summer day and he liked swimming in the river anyway. While he was splashing around, the king came by in his carriage. At once the cat began to cry out, Help! Help! The Marquis de Carabas is drowning! Help! Help! As soon as the king heard this name, he ordered the carriage to be stopped and commanded his flunkies to run immediately to rescue the Marquis de Carabas. While they were dragging the boy out of the river, Puss in Boots came up to the carriage and told the king that while his master was bathing, some thieves had come and taken all of his clothes away. In fact, the cunning cat had hidden them under a rock. 
The king immediately sent an officer off to the palace to fetch one of his best suits for the Marquis of Carabas. Once he was dressed in these new clothes, the miller's son was transformed into such a handsome, noble-looking young man that the princess instantly fell in love with him. She persuaded her father to invite him into the royal carriage to accompany them on their drive. Puss in Boots, who had watched all this with the greatest satisfaction, hurried off ahead of the royal party. Soon he came across some peasants, mowing a meadow, and said unto them, The king will be driving past soon. When he stops and asks you who owns this meadow that you are mowing, you had better say it belongs to my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. For if you don't, you will be chopped into little pieces. Sure enough, the king ordered his carriage to stop and asked the mowers to whom the meadow belonged. To my lord, the Marquis of Carabas, the mowers answered with one voice, for the cat had almost scared them silly. The king turned to the young man and congratulated him on his fine fertile lands. Meanwhile, the cat ran on ahead once again and soon came across some reapers reaping a field. Again he told them to say the fields around belonged to the Marquis of Carabas, and again he threatened them with the chopper if they did not. When the king came by a moment later and asked the men who owned the land, they chorused obediently, To my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. And the king once again complimented the young man by his side. Puss kept running ahead of the royal carriage, and as the king drove on through the countryside, he kept hearing the same story. Finally, Puss in Boots came to a stately castle, which was owned by an ogre. In fact, it was he who owned all the lands that the king had been riding through. The cat asked to speak to him, saying that his fame had spread far and wide. The ogre was very flattered at this and invited Puss in Boots to sit down. I have heard much about your great skills, the cat went on, and I have been told that you are able to turn yourself into whatever you like. I have heard, for instance, that you can turn yourself into a lion or an elephant or some such wild animal. Indeed I can, said the ogre proudly, and to prove it, I shall show you now. With these words, he transformed himself into a lion and loud out a great roar, which shook the castle walls. Puss in Boots was so frightened that he leapt up into the roof, which was a dangerous thing to do in his boots. Eventually, when the ogre had resumed his natural form, Puss jumped down again. You really scared me, he told the ogre. But I've also heard it said that you can take on the shape of a tiny creature, such as, let's say, a mouse or a rat. I think that would be quite impossible. Impossible? Nothing is impossible for me, exclaimed the ogre. And with that, he changed himself into a field mouse and began scampering around the floor. With one pounce, the cat caught him and ate him up. Meanwhile, the king had seen the castle in the distance and decided to pay a call on its owner. As the carriage rattled over the drawbridge, Puss hurried towards it. Welcome to the castle of the Marquis of Carabas, he called, and the king was delighted to hear that his friend lived in such a splendid place. The young man invited the king and princess into the great hall, where a feast had already been prepared by the ogre for his friends who were now too scared to come in. When they had finished eating and drinking everything on the tables, the king proposed to the Marquis that since he and the princess had obviously fallen in love, they ought to get married. This they promptly did and lived happily ever after. As for Puss in Boots, he became a great lord and never chased mice again, except for fun. The End Thank you so much for watching this episode of Fairy Tale Nails. It has been a while, so thank you so much for being loyal and for subscribing and for being my awesome friends. And I'm out of stuff to say. So see you guys next time. Bye.